Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the SNW Metalworks Go To Slip Joint. This is a super bright little slip joint from SNW Metalworks, a very recent model, and they have some really, really cool colors of these. This is not going to be a full review, this is going to be a very quick um, semi review because just outright do not recommend buying this knife. However, there are some revisions coming, so keep that in mind. So this is more of a, uh, a quick overview and there will be a re-review when the revisions are released. Let's go ahead and do a quick size comparison here. So we have the S&W Metalworks go-to slip joint and we have my other favorite slip joint which is still my favorite slip joint, the Benchmade Proper. So the Proper is a little bit longer, a little bit wider, about the same thickness actually. So if you like the size of the Proper, keep that in mind. Another small little knife here. This is the Microtech UTX 70. Another little small knife. Uh, handle length is very similar. Blade length is different for sure. A um, lot of blade in this little handle actually. Another little uh, American made knife of a similar price range. Not really a knife, but you, you know what I mean. This is the uh, Giltech Ruck. Just got this one in. Really like this. This really cool uh, green blue color. It's really really nice looking. Um, those are about the same price. This is a little bit more expensive. We'll touch on that. And uh, two more quick comparisons here. Another similarly bright bladed knife. This is the Boker Kalashnikov in electric blue. Much much larger. A much different knife. Um, but the painted blades are somewhat similar. And one more. We've got the Buck Marksman. Much, much larger knife. Also got an orange handle on there, though. Let's go ahead and go into what I like about this thing. First up, uh, the color. I, I love these colors. It's kind of a green-blue here. Like a, a sea foamy color. And then a really, really bright, vibrant orange. I'm leaning a bit into the red spectrum with some black splatter on the handle. So color scheme-wise, I, I think they nailed it with this. Really, really nice. I do wish they'd done a black um, locking stud here instead of the silver, just because it complements the black splatter and the black uh, pivot screw, but they went with silver, so that's that was their choice. Next up, the blade. Really, really nice blade shape. Really, really thin blade stock. I'm not the thinnest thing ever, but it's, it's pretty similar to the proper, um, with a little bit, in my opinion, a little bit better of a grind. At least it seems to cut better um, in, in the short time that I've been using it here. Next, the design, which is really what attracted me to this knife. This is a very interesting little slip joint. I mean, look at this thing. There's there's nothing else out there like it, you know. Um, it actually locks in place. It has a, a bar here with a little stud attached to it. And that locks in at this point when it's closed and this point when it's open. So you can see it in place there when it's closed. And when it opens up, it clicks right into place there as well. Overall, it's very interesting. One another interesting little part of it is the handle is just one piece of steel that has been bent. I assume it's been bent. It looks like it. So it is technically, technically, it's an integral. Um, it's the only integral I've ever owned and probably the cheapest one you will ever find. Um, so keep that in mind. This is an integral knife, which means it is definitively high end. Next up, size and thickness. Um, overall, the size is pretty good. I like it. It's a very nice carryable size. It's pretty small. Most slip joints tend to be, uh, at least in my experience. And the thickness, again, very, very similar uh, in both blade stock thickness and handle thickness to the Benchmade proper, which are both very, very good specs. Last thing is, it, it's made in America, and the price is really good. Um, well, it would be. The price should be good. Um, the price is about $50 for these. They say it goes up to 65 but I've seen it at 50 for the past couple of months since Blade Show. And uh, since before Blade Show, sorry. And $50 is, is would be reasonable if it were uh, done correctly. And we'll get to that later. Let's go ahead and go on the neutral. First thing up is the weight. Uh, this is entirely steel. So this is a little bit heavier than you might think. It is heavier than the proper for sure. Um, it's probably about twice the weight actually of the proper. Very, very heavy knife. Much heavier than the UTX-70. Much, much heavier than the uh, Giltech Ruck. Overall, 
It's pretty comparable in weight, actually, to the Boker Kalashnikov, maybe a little bit heavier. Um, so keep that in mind when you're picking this up. This is not a lightweight knife. It is not lightweight. Even though it is small, it is compact, it is very heavy, especially for its size. Next up, it's difficult to open one-handed. It can be done. There's two ways to do this, and we'll go over them both real quick. I'll try about my best not to cut myself. Um, one, with this little cutout, you can kind of do a pinch grip, get the blade out, and then roll out the rest of the way with the thumb stud. Um, or you can just go ahead and go outright with the thumb stud. It's not really a thumb stud, but this stud looking thing here. And it's not that hard to open up till here, but right around here it gets a little difficult. And you might not want to watch out, you can pinch your finger. But you can do it. It is a struggle. It is much, much quicker to go in and just open this up one handed. Another thing, I really wish this were moved down just a little bit because getting right in here is fine, but opening it up all that way is a little more difficult. I tend to open it here, slide down just a little bit farther. Um, sometimes even towards the tip, but right around here is a good spot, and open it up. So I wish that removed down just a tad. The pivot screw is not flush on this. So it only has one screw because it's an integral. And it is not flush. It does stick out, and it's only on one side. We'll come back to that later. But this side does not have a screw. That side only. And it's, it just sticks out. Now, it is a little bit more inward than the, than the, uh, the stud here. So it's not going to catch on your pocket or anything any more than this would. But I really wish they had made, made both of these flush to the body. Um, again, you're not really going to be opening this with this stud, so I wish they kind of shrunk that down along with the uh, pivot screw there. Last thing here, I really wish there were a sharpening or a finger choil. You can get a three-finger grip on it, or at least I can, and then kind of brace your thumb here. However, I think th this part of the blade has no use, and this is already kind of scooped out. I really wish they'd just gone for a finger choil. It'd allow you to really, really choke up on the blade. Uh, it'll allow a little bit of a sharpening choil as well, so you don't have to worry about sharpening this, this blade and it forming a recurve, which would ruin this blade shape. But I think that would give you a much better grip ergonomically. And while it wouldn't be quite as aesthetically appealing, actually, if they balanced it out with this, it might. I don't know. But I, I wish they would add uh, a finger slash sharpening choil just to really really bring this knife up ergonomically however it's not bad it's just not as good as i think it could be let's go and go on to the dislike a lot here first up finishing issues this is the uh one of the big ones for me uh, a couple things here so one i'll zoom in real quick here for you if i can get it to focus up there we go so if you look, I can't get any closer than this, so I apologize. If you look, there are some scuffs and wear marks on the studs. I have not carried this in my pocket for a full day. And when I have carried it, it hasn't been in my pocket with anything else. This is it, you know. And there's scratches and wear marks there already. Another thing, and I talk with the company about this. I'll get to that later. If you look, the handle, uh, the finish is just fine up here and kind of up here. As you get down towards the bottom, it gets a little... Sorry about the focus thing there. It gets a little dusty looking. A little, come on, you can do it. it gets a little dusty looking. Um, right around there, you can see it. It's not super great, but you can you can see what I'm talking about a little bit right there as well. Um, that's just a, a paint finish issue. It's not fantastic, but it's there. Go ahead and zoom back out a little bit here. Okay, so here's where it gets a little worse. Um, so the paint is coming off here. You can see that. It's a little hard to focus on, but you can see on both sides. That's just where this thumb stud is scraping across it. Not rolling, it is scraping. Now, they this is one of the things they're looking to address. They're coming up with a rolling uh, stud, which I think will save a lot of that paint wear and tear. So that that's good. And that should eradicate most of that issue. However, I have found that this paint does come off fairly easily as it is. So this is not going to be a super durable finish. Although it is very, very nice looking. It's not going to last you uh, forever by, by any means. And that's to be expected with a painted finish like this. Next thing up, this can't be disassembled. And what I mean by that is I, I tried because of the next issue we're going to get to. When you remove this screw... 
there's a stud coming out of this end. And if you look, there's no pivot screw on this side. There's a little orange hexagon where it's probably painted in. But there's no pivot screw on this side. The pivot itself is painted orange, entirely embedded in this end and cannot be removed. So you can take out this screw and I managed to get this washer out, but the blade will not come out. It will not come up off of that, that stud and this washer will also not come out. So this blade is completely dis undisassemblable, at least the one that I have here. That's not good. Um, again, between the paint and that, this is not going to be a long-term knife. This is going to be a semi-disposable knife. It may last you a few years. Um, again, at 50 bucks, it's not that bad, but that's not a, a good thing. Uh, it's a very interesting design, and it's ruined by, by stuff like that. Next thing up is uh, probably the, the second biggest issue for me, and that's the centering. I'm going to set this knife right here. You're not zoomed in. You can already tell the centering's off. So let's zoom in just a bit, and I'll show you even better. So you can tell right there that the centering is off. Let's zoom out just a tad so it will focus up. So the centering obviously favors this side over here. It was like that when I got it. So, like any normal person would do, I tried to loosen the pivot. So I'm going to show you what that does. Let's zoom back out here just a bit. So, right now, centering, favoring, uh, not even, there's no lock side, but favoring the back side um, quite a bit. It's almost scraping. There's a hair, a hair of space between the two. There is a little bit of blade play horizontally and a little bit vertically. Now it's a slip joint. You're probably wondering why I'm mentioning vertical blade play. That's because other slip joints that actually lock in place well do not have it. Bench me proper does not have any blade play at all. This, if you keep it on the thumb side, you're probably gonna get the best representation of the of the horizontal or the uh, sorry, vertical blade play. You can see it rocking back and forth there. And the horizontal blade play, there's definitely a little bit there. I'm trying to lock it down as good as I can. But there's a little bit, not much. It's still very usable, um, but it is there. So let's go ahead and loosen up this pivot. Uh, this is an Allen key. It is not a Torx bit. However, Torx bits will work. So use that at your own discretion. I don't have an Allen key on hand. So, Torx bits, it will be. Um, I found a T8 will fit um, fairly well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen up the pivot just a bit. And we're gonna close it down. Now you can see it's it's over way too far this way now. So we're just gonna, we're gonna tighten it up just a tad. Try to get the centering perfect. Okay, so centering. Let's set it down here so we can see. Centering is favoring, favoring this side just a, a little bit as well. Let's loosen it up. Just a touch. There we go. Okay. From my end, that looks okay. I think the grind may be off. Um, up here, though, you know, it, it's it's about perfect. Now, a couple things have happened. One, this knife is much, much easier to open now. Um, I can open it one-handed, no problem, which is awesome. I mean, if, if, if this were a feature and not a bug, that'd be great. But here's where we have the real problem. So horizontal blade play um, is even worse. You can definitely see it there now. I'm sorry, vertical blade play. Horizontal blade play, you can now see very, very easily too. Um, it is rattly in the pivot area. You can very much tell that. Like this is, you, you can see me moving the blade back and forth. That's not okay. That shouldn't be like that. But that's how it has to be if you want to get the centering correct. So let's tighten it back down to where there's no blade play. And we're gonna try not to make the blade scrape. Okay, so there's a little bit of space, just a touch on this side of the blade. Let's see. Still a little too easy to open. I think there's still gonna be some. Yeah, there's still some some blade play. Gotta tighten it down a little bit more. Now I would love to have perfect centering and no blade play, but
but if I had to pick one, I'd pick no blade play because it's just safer. There's still a bit there. Is it scraping? It's, let's see. It is not scraping, but it is damn close. But still have a little bit of blade play. So for $50, they give you a knife that has a slightly poorly finished handle. It's the least of my concerns, right? A lot of finishing issues, piss poor centering, blade play if you try to fix it, and it can't be disassembled. Normally, I would just tear this knife to pieces. Because right now, pardon the language, it is a, in my opinion, completely uncareable piece of shit. Um, if, if you do want it to be safe-ish and not have any blade play, you're going to have to have it scraping that other side, at least for this one that I have. That's not okay for me. You know, $50 is not a ton of money, but for some people, that's a lot for a knife. For most people, that's a lot. For any sane person, $50 is a decent knife. This is not okay. So, what I did was I reached out to the company. You know, I, I wanted to give them a chance. They seemed like good guys, so I went ahead and reached out to them. So, um, I said, hey guys, just got my go-to in and I love the design, but I have a few issues. The centering is way off and when I try to loosen the pivot to center it, it develops a ton of blade play. There's also some sort of grayish residue on the paint. I'll send some pics. So first picture I have here is of the centering. You can tell it is piss poor, especially down this way. And then you kind of get that grayish dust towards the bottom down here that I was talking about. Uh, it looks like the paint was just a little smeared. So what did they say? Sorry about that. We've noticed that each of our orange handles has their own unique finish. That sounds a little horse shitty. But you, that's fine. The paint wasn't really my concern, to be honest. $50.00. I don't expect perfection. Once we get our next batch of orange handles finished, which might be a few weeks, we'll send one your way. So, what have they offered to do? They have offered to send me a replacement knife due to the paint. Maybe just the, maybe just a replacement handle. I hope not. I can't fucking disassemble the thing. Pardon the language. I need to calm down just a little bit. It's just a little irritating. Um, because they didn't bother to address my main issue, which is the centering and blade play, making this knife that is a great design. It really is, guys. This knife is awesome looking. It's fantastic looking. And once you get it in hand, if there wasn't any blade play, it'd be really good. It'd be excellent. But they didn't address my main concern, which was a safety issue with this knife. The scraping bothers me it it does but it bothers me even more on a painted handle when i know for a fact that if i tighten this down to where there's no blade play the paint right here is going to start wearing off and the paint inside the handle which i don't really care about all that much is going to start wearing off as well this was handled very poorly i don't often go to uh, you know customer service stuff when i have an issue unless i really like the company and I really like this company. They seem like great guys. I had a chat on Instagram with one of them. You know, uh, very, very chill guys. They put out a really unique design at an affordable price. I should have known there was going to be a catch. But this is garbage. It's finished like garbage. And the way this issue was addressed for me, a paying customer, is garbage. Um, I was not offered... A refund I was not offered to have I, I would have sent the knife back in just to have them check it out didn't get that offer they offered to send me an entirely new knife which again is is fine but we're gonna have to see what happens when the new knife comes in if there's you know no residue on the handle that's great but what I'm really mainly concerned about is the blade centering and blade play and to a lesser degree, the disassembly, I, I can kind of get over that. But as of right now, this knife is not safe. And it's not fun to carry. It's really disheartening. I really like this design. And I really wanted to like this knife. And looking at it through this camera lens, I'm sorry, not through the lens, but through the screen of the camera where I'm recording, it still looks really, really attractive. 
But the second I pick it up and I put it in my hand and I feel that rocking back and forth, just that play, just that tad bit, but it's there. It drives me insane. So, um, <laughs> we're going to wait. I'm going to see how well the revision is of this knife, and I'll give him another chance. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this is corrected. And I really hope that I'm the only person that was affected by this. Because it's it's a great design. You know, if they could execute it well and stay at that same price, this would be amazing. This would be my go-to recommendation haha, <laughs> for slip joint. Because to be honest, while I like the Benchmade proper a lot more, this is a hell of a lot easier to recommend. It's visually more interesting to most people and again you can get it in a ton of different finishes they have many different handle and uh, they're working on some blade colors as well but right now i can't i can't recommend it so i'm gonna wait give it a few weeks see what happens um i'm probably gonna put this review out before then just so everyone knows not to buy one right now in my opinion if you want to go ahead if you've had a good experience with it let me know please Please let me know in the comments. Also, let me know what you think of this. Um, I've noticed slip joints making a comeback, and some of these very interesting kind of modern designs have really been speaking to me. I know some people don't like them, but I'd love to hear your opinion down there. And um, if you have any questions regarding anything, just uh, leave me a comment or shoot me an email. Thanks, guys. Bye.